So here you are. You chose this field as an environmental engineer and you worry whether or not you're gonna find a job once you graduate. Full disclaimer, I am not an employer and I do not hire anyone, so don't ask me to hire you. That being said, I will give you tips on how you can find a job as an environmental engineer. Based off my own experience, what I did or what I would have done, not all these tips will guarantee that you'll find a job, so take that into consideration. And there are so many factors, but these are just the tips that I would advise and try to follow when you're looking or choosing this field. Hopefully you did your research before choosing this field and you know you didn't just blindly choose this major. So let's get into it. Let's find you that job. Now the first thing that you need to do when you want to get a job as an environmental engineer is to major or study in a field related to environmental engineering. And what better way to do that than by majoring in a college that offers that degree. So during your schooling in college, your university, if it's good, should prepare you with all the courses and skills that's relevant and necessary for once you graduate and get out to become an environmental engineer. So you should be able to already have the skills or the mindset that the employers are looking for once you graduate. Although I do realize that some universities, they might focus more on like civil engineering, while some other universities might focus more on like the sciencey side of environmental engineering. Some employers, they might look for environmental engineers who are more technical on the civil engineering side. And it could also be the reverse, where they're looking for someone who's more on the sciencey side. So again, just be prepared for both what the university offers and what they're like, what field they're trying to delve into versus what the employer wants and what they're trying to delve into. So just read the description of what the university wants and what it does and also what the employer wants. In the end, just do your research on both the academic and the employer side because that is very specific to you and that doesn't affect me. Now the second thing you want to do if you want to work in this field as an environmental engineer is to get relative work or internship experience. So during school, you're a full-time student and you don't really have much experience at all. So if you want to get your foot in the door, you'll need some experience. Now experience can come in the form of maybe research project with your professor or maybe interning with an engineering company somewhere. And you want relative work experience, so not some random like customer service, you know, Starbucks or fast food experience. Although this can help your soft skills, but employers typically want experience relative to that field. That way they don't have to spend so much time training you. That saves them a lot of time and a lot of money. And you know, it's best for everyone just to already know what they're doing once they're like introduced to each other. Now the third thing is know someone within that company. I know this may sound pretty unfair, but sometimes it's not what you know, but who you know. If you already know someone within that company who works as an engineer, and you are wanting to join that company, then it is just so much easier to get in. Your friend here can just refer you to the hiring manager or the human resource department and tell them all the good things about you. Obviously, since your friend already works there, he's already built a reputation in the company, so you know, maybe he works really hard, he's trustworthy, so of course they're gonna take his word for it. More than likely, the hiring manager doesn't want to like hire random people that are applying because you don't know about them, but your friend who is trustworthy, they will take his word. So just knowing someone within that company increases your odds of getting in, whether it be in that same company or maybe somewhere else. Maybe your friend can refer you to some different company. So just that trust factor is enough to get people in. But again, I do see how it's unfair because for me coming in, I didn't know anyone and I knew a lot of classmates who did know other people within a company. So they're just able to get a job right away while I was just left in the dust watching everyone get employed. So it is a bit of favoritism and it is unfair, but again, that's just how it is. Now the next thing that you want to do if you want to get this job is live in a place that is actually serious about the environment. So some countries or in some places are just more serious about the environment than some others. That's just reality. Obviously you can't control what the state or the country does, but you can move around if you have the money to do that. So if you have to, you just have to move to get the job. Go where the jobs are. But do this in consideration of how much money will it cost to move, how much time will it take to move, you know, what other factors are there. Will I enjoy that stay? Are people going to appreciate me? Will I fit in? You know, this will require the most thinking. This is very life-changing for you. And lastly, if you want a job, it's to time the job market perfectly. So in my opinion, the environmental concerns and problems, they're just getting worse year after year. It's practically impossible now to ignore and the companies and governments are starting to realize this. You can't ignore the problems forever. And if they do, then they'll just look bad compared to their other peers or you know, competing companies. So other governments or companies are going to look down on the company that's not trying to help the environment. So it'll just almost peer pressure them to change their ways. So now that peer pressure will give you more job opportunities. 
And honestly, I do think that now is the perfect time to jump in because as people are starting to realize that, hey, we should not destroy the environment or things are just going to get worse, that the right now the current job market is low. But because they're shifting their mindset, you are sort of jumping in at the right time. You want to jump in while the demand is low. You don't want to wait in line for the whole job market to be saturated where now you have hundreds of competing applicants. No, obviously you want to be the first one in line. But this could be a double-edged sword. Do realize that maybe you jump in and people still don't care about it and demand is still low for years. You want to do your own research. You don't want to just jump in and then wait for years and years and years and never get the job because your country or wherever you are from never changes. So make sure that you have a backup plan in case it doesn't work out. Again, just do your due diligence on whether or not you can foresee a shift in your location or whether your state or your country, your government will change their mindset when it comes to environmental concerns. If there are environmental problems, then there will be job openings for that position. And so those are the five tips I have for you if you want to get a job as an environmental engineer in this current date of 2021. In the end, it all does depend still on your university and really on the hiring company and what they want. So no matter what advice I give you, even if you follow it completely, I'm not the one hiring you. This really is just to make you more marketable and show that you are truly serious about this field. So that's all I have for the video. If you liked it, go ahead and share, like, subscribe. Good luck on your job search and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.